Hi, I'm the lucky bird tie-in. <gasps> what is that? What are you? What is that? No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. When I found out that Steady was making a new game, I wasn't sure what kind of video to make. You see, I've known Steady for a while, a little bit before the Bravado video that came out earlier this year. We met in the game Comedy Club, and his ongoing joke was promotion for a game that, at the time, we didn't know was of his own creation. It made for some laughs, and after joining in on the gag and some other servers, I ended up talking with him outside of the game. We came to an arrangement of me making a video for him in exchange for him putting a new cosmetic in the game, a bow tie. Now, to this day, he is still yet to honour his side of the deal, but he is a funny guy and we still chat from time to time. Which brings us to this game, Area 51. I hit him up and asked for a key so I could make a video. Now, the video for Bravado was a very stupid, very tongue-in-cheek gag that went on for a bit too long. Something that I can't imagine would work twice. Or even once, for that matter. I considered a let's play, but that video type has never quite fit the style I've wanted for my channel. So we're back to the review style that I sort of abandoned a few months ago. With that said, here we go! So, Area 51. It's a wave-based game with three basic objectives. Kill the enemies, save the aliens, and survive as long as you can. The enemies are purely ranged, wielding an automatic rifle. On their own, they're easily defeatable, but get them in a group and you'll be cut down like you're a black guy in a horror movie. Along with the enemies, you also have automated strikes during the game. First is the carpet bombing. It hits the map at a random point. Not much more to say. Second is what I like to call the Independence Day Nuke. See the following. As pertaining to the meme, there are three classes in Area 51. Huh? Four classes? What's the Londoner? No, no, it's meant to be one Naruto runners, two rock throwers, Three Kyles. Alright. All classes have a basic attack and a special ability. Naruto runners are the first class available to you, essentially a scout class. We can run faster than their bullets is very accurate here. The Naruto runner's basic attack is a punch. Basic describes it perfectly. Its special is a dash, which can not only get you out of hairy situations, but is also a much more powerful attack. The regen time for the special is pretty fast, which makes for a fairly solid first class to start your raid career with, but simple enough to make a welcome change when you level up to Rock Thrower. Gain 8 levels and you reach the class of Rock Thrower. The name says everything you need to know about him. He acts as a support class, being able to attack enemies from a distance. Keep in mind that you aren't fighting a Alone, there is crowd play involved with a number of AI friendlies of the different classes. So when I say support class, it can actually be used to support your teammates. The rock thrower's basic attack is a rock throw, not worth a whole lot of damage, but you can get some range if you know how to throw well. Its special ability is the big rock throw. Big, big, big Yoshi, big Yoshi, big rock throw. The big rock throw. Exactly the same as the basic attack, but with less range and speed and more damage. This class can get pretty boring, so once again, leveling up to the next class is a welcome change. The infamous monster guzzling Kyles, simply known as Kyles within the game. They act as an offensive class, with their special being the best in the game. They skull their energy drink and instantly gain a speed boost, attack boost, and automatic health renewing. Their basic attack is just a punch though. Speaking of health, for all other classes you can't regain health except for when you kill an enemy, which is a pretty good dynamic, but I do wish you could regain some health if you stopped moving or something like that. That segues us nicely to power-ups. The power-ups in this game are- what? I missed the Londoner- what? Uh, 
So I, uh, I actually didn't unlock the Londoner. I, uh, I know he has a knife, though. <laughs> anyway, power-ups. In this game, the power-ups are collected in the same way that you entertain a chimp. Look at the shiny ball! Yes, these balls are dropped from an airplane that flies over a few times during each wave, similar to the airdrops within Battle Royale games. Each color offers a different ability. Green is for health regen, blue is for speed, and red is for damage. See the ball, run for it, and touch it, and you've got yourself some primetime steroids for your character. Alright, let's talk for a sec about the sound design. It's certainly not awful by any measure, but in my time playing, I found it to be way too quiet and not as satisfying as it could be. The voice acting is surprisingly solid, and the aliens have some good quips when being rescued. I'm also a big fan of the music used within the game, though it could have been mixed with the other elements a bit better. And all that's left is my final notes. Uh, sorry. There we go, there you go, there you go. First of all, the crowd play in the game adds to the immersion tenfold. It feels great to get in a mob and force your way through enemies with your fellow raiders. Speaking of raids, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Subscribe? You know what, I'm gonna take this chance to, you know, kinda kind of plug all the different stuff I do if you uh, check out uh, it should be in a card somewhere around here uh, but my fiver gigs up uh, you can hire me to be your spokesperson as long as it's nothing inappropriate I, I'll, I'll do whatever and it's, uh, it's 10 bucks Australian uh, no not Australian USD uh, so you know do that uh, check out Steady's game area 51 it's on sale for a few days on Steam so get it while you can and uh, yeah Thank, thank you, thank.